Sure seemed like a full moon kind of night here. <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> Nine caution flags, a lot of tempers boiling here at Richmond tonight. And um, we've, we've seen some things that will no doubt lead us to some further disciplinary action by the sanctioning body in the upcoming days. Now, before we get to talking about some of that more, a little bit ago, Marty spoke with tonight's third place finisher, Kevin Grubb. Well, Kevin Grubb, you got to think, what if? I mean, you and the 59 got into a little trouble there. And uh, first of all, what happened there? And if that wouldn't have happened, what could you have done tonight? Yeah, um, I mean, the 59 car, we've had a little trouble the past few weeks. And um, I just went out of my way to race him clean this weekend. I actually got into him once and backed off and uh, let him have a position. But, um, you know, just to show we could race clean. And um, now we're showing what we can do. I'm sure we can do it every week. But, um, <clears throat> you know, how about the Timberwolf car? It was it was running this week. Um, you know, we unloaded. It was fast in practice. And um, I, I guess it was me in qualifying. I uh, had a fast car and up qualifying 17. But, um, you know, we worked our way up through there. And, um, you know, the guys did a great job on pit stops. The Timberwolf team was um, really, really working hard to get, get the car out of the pits. And, um, you know, we, we seemed like we'd gain five or six spots and we'd lose three. And um, it's kind of that all night, you know, whether I get caught behind a slow car or, or whatever. But, um, you know, we knew once we got up there with the fast cars, we could run with them because we were fast and happy hour. And, um, Sure enough, we got up there, and um, I switched. I could have been up there a little earlier because I think we were um, about as fast as anybody was. I'd like to battle with uh, Matt and um, and Jimmy and battle to the end. Always a good good to do it in front of the hometown folks, too. Matt, uh, Kevin Grubb, rather, finishes third tonight and a great run for the hometown guy. Yes, it was. Much needed, too, as Kevin and that team try to secure their 2002 plans. Now, let's go back to the wildness I was talking about, and... This is the first of the, what will be two most talked about incidents tonight. Greg Biffle, the, eight, the 60 car, gets in the back of Jay Sauter in 43. There we see it. He clearly gets in the back of him, spins around the 43 car, gets in the wall. Then, at 184. After Sauter spends 87 laps in the garage getting repairs made. And he just turns right into the 60 car. That's about as blatant as you can get. Jay comes off the corner, Biffle on the outside of him, turns right, and they make contact, and then the wall, both of them go. Watch, once again, there's a 60 car on the outside, watch the 43. Man, that yellow line is very incriminating as a reference point, isn't it? Yes, it is. And, and here you'll see Biffle see if Jay's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and obviously Biffle was very angry. Comes over and boom! Throws a punch. Well, he certainly couldn't have hit him that hard because Sauter still had his helmet on. Always leave your helmet on. Yeah. Well, let, let's talk about some of this. We, we got into a discussion briefly at the time, guys, about... For, well, first of all, we led the very top of our broadcast talking about would paybacks be a factor this week after what we've seen the last couple of weeks. Obviously, they were. But you're talking about guys racing over 100 miles an hour and getting paybacks. But the paybacks we're talking about were from last week or the week, a couple of weeks ago. I don't think any of those really counted, but tonight, if something happened, boom, they repaid before the night was over, got repaid before the night was over in the case with Biffle and Jay Sauter. Yeah, well, it, you know, if you're going to go in the, in the garage area and get your car back together so you can go finish the job out that night, I, I don't think anybody's looking for that kind of payback. So, but, you know, there's got to be, there's, you know, in a driver situation, you put yourself in, in Jay's shoes. He felt like he was done wrong and nothing was done about it. But that doesn't give him the right to go out and do what he did. And that was, you know, you can talk about broken panar bars all you want. That's a, That was a pretty blatant what happened. Kevin Harvick and Chad Little got in kind of a wrestling match in the garage area after the Darlington race last Saturday. Cost Harvick ten grand and Chad five, so... What's that going to cost Greg Biffle? It's, it's going to cost him plenty. There's no doubt about it. Will he sit? Will he be suspended? He might. Uh, he might because that is something that NASCAR has to take an awfully strong look at. And I wouldn't be surprised maybe if both those guys are not suspended for a few races. Because, I mean, folks, we cannot, I repeat, we cannot have this continue. Uh, you know, we can't go out. I mean, the guys, first of all, they have to drive. And go out if you make contact with somebody that guy in front has to understand it and you can't go back in the garage or fix your car come back and crash somebody but again they need to drive with a little more care to begin with so that doesn't happen but we cannot have these paybacks we can't have drivers going in and throwing a punch at another guy we just can't have this i'm sure that after what we saw at Bristol and again last week at darlington nascar felt like the fines they handed out this week to the four drivers 
was supposed to be a statement to say enough is enough. We're not going to do this this way anymore. Obviously, it wasn't a strong enough statement. Those four drivers had no problem. But, you know, yeah, the statement was not strong enough to the other 39 drivers that this is going to happen to you. Yes, they're going to be fine. But it, money, I don't think, is the answer. I don't think that money is going to be the answer because we've seen guys find $50,000 on the NASCAR and Winston Cup side. We need, I think, these guys need to sit a couple of races, and I think they might learn their lesson if they do that. Uh, I, I agree. The money thing doesn't, th that doesn't really affect these guys. Uh, sitting home and watching the race from TV, that'll make you think twice. So we'll find out, and usually the way these things work, it'll be Monday, Tuesday at the earliest before we find out for sure what kind of disciplinary action NASCAR will take against Biffle or Sauter. NASCAR Bush Series Racing from Richmond on TNT is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. By General Nutrition Centers, visit one of GNC's 4,500 stores nationwide to help you live your best life. GNC, live well. And by Goodyear, who reminds you to take all of life's journeys on the wings of Goodyear. Coming up next, get into the drama of the Goodwill Games. We'll head to Brisbane, Australia for more competition next right here on TNT. Tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern Time, NASCAR on TNT continues with the Winston Cup Series Chevy Monte Carlo 400 with the Looney Tunes. Going to be a great race. I don't know if we'll see as much wildness as we've seen tonight, but we'll sure see a lot of side-by-side -side competition, that's for sure. Here's the starting lineup for tomorrow night's race. It'll be Jeff Gordon and Rusty Wallace, couple of former winners here on the front row. Back in row four, Casey Atwood, great run. Dale Earnhardt Jr. was very, very good in practice. Todd Bodine back in the inside of row six. Dale Jarrett could have come from row eight. And there's the guy on the inside of row nine, the 30 car, Jeff Green. In happy hour, looked to be by far the best car. Kevin Harvick, gonna start from row number 11. Robert Preston coming back from that crash at Darlington last week. Kenny Wallace still continues in the one car. They announced today that Steve Park would probably be out for a minimum of four to six weeks. Matt Kenseth from row 19, and you look at some of those who got in on provisional starting spots. Kevin LePage to round out the 43 car field. That's at 7.30 Eastern time tomorrow night here on TNT. What a wild night this was for the NASCAR Bush Series. Hits, paybacks, a little fire and some sparks to keep the night on edge as well. Just hard nose racing all the way through the field, sometimes stepping over the edge. It'll be interesting to see what the retributions are from the sanctioning body, from the referees during the week this week. In the end, Jimmy Spencer joined Harry Gann and Mark Martin in pulling off the Richmond sweep. He won in May. He won again tonight. For Benny Wally and our entire NASCAR on TNT crew, Alan Bestwick, thanks for watching. See you tomorrow night.